Hey, what's going on guys? Neil here bringing you a brand new video. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to invest in stocks for beginners. I'm going to break it down for you guys step by step on how you guys are going to get started. So let's hop right into it. So the first step when you want to invest in stocks would be to define your goals. You know, why do you want to invest in stocks? Are you a little bit younger and you want to compound your wealth? Are you a little bit older? Maybe you want to preserve your wealth and generate passive income, which you could do through dividends. Do you have a long-term time horizon, which I recommend? Do you have a short-term time horizon? You know, a lot of people are short-term focused. They just want short-term money, but I recommend having a long-term time horizon because short-term focus can lead to taking unnecessary risk. And maybe it's going to lead to you even losing money. So that's the first thing is define your goals. The next thing to do would be to pick a broker. So I recommend Webull if you want a user-friendly app. Webull has free trades, level two quotes, desktop software, and more. And right now they're offering free 12 stocks just for signing up using my link below and depositing $1. So you can get up to $36,000 in free stocks just for signing up and depositing $1. So definitely check that out in the description below and take advantage of those free stocks. On top of that, I recommend TD Ameritrade. TD is what I use as well. I use TD and Webull. TD has free trades, free trading software, which is called Thinkorswim, which is a little more advanced, but you don't need to use that if you don't want to. They're a legacy broker, so they have things like customer service and more. So after you've gone ahead and defined your goals, you picked a broker, what do you do next? The next thing to do would be to research investments. So ETFs are exchange traded funds, which are basically just a bunch of stocks in one fund. The S&P 500 ticker symbol SPY is the most traded stock in the market. It includes 500 plus large cap American companies. And why I recommend the S&P to people, even though of course this is not financial advice, is just because you're investing in big companies like Apple, Amazon, Tesla, Google. And if one of these companies, you know, let's say crashes on earnings, the S&P is not going to crash on earnings because it has a basket of many other stocks. So obviously, the downside risk is less, but of course the upside risk is going to be less too. Meaning if you want more upside, then you're going to have to research individual companies. And if you're going to go ahead and do that, then you're going to have to learn how to read financial statements. And on top of just reading financial statements and understanding the fundamentals of stocks, it's also important to understand how narratives affect market price. So what do I mean by that? An example of a narrative that happened recently, I think in 2021 would be electric vehicles. I think electric vehicles hit the mainstream, not just Tesla. And we had a bunch of IPOs, right, coming out like Rivian, Lucid, that were just pumping to the moon, basically, off of nothing, right? They could have, you know, negative revenue or, you know, negative profit loss, and they're still pumping. That's because at the time, EV stocks were hot. Now, EV stocks are not as hot, so only the best companies are going to survive. And you have to understand how to take advantage of these narratives and understand how not to get caught up in hype as well. So the next thing to do would be to create your strategy dash take action. So if your company offers a 5% 401k match, I would put 5% of each paycheck into the 401k. What that does is that allows you to get a free 5% from your company. And then you're also putting 5% as well. That's going to be invested into different ETFs and funds in the market. You know, the upside of the 401ks, you're getting this match from your company. The downside is, is that you're putting in pre-tax dollars. So when you pull out, there's going to be a massive tax bill that you're going to have to pay, especially if you've grown your portfolio into millions of dollars. So that's why I recommend only putting whatever your company matches into your 401k. Then I would trickle down into maxing out your Roth IRA. They increased the max contribution to $6,500 in 2023, which is just over $500 a month. So if you can just put $500 a month into your Roth IRA, that's going to put you in a great position to at least max out that Roth and maybe get, let's say, set and forget it, get an 8 to 10% return in the S&P 500. And that's going to put you in a great place in the future to have these two retirement accounts. When you're ready for retirement, you can start pulling out at 59 and a half. And the really great tax advantage of the Roth IRA is that you're putting in post-tax dollars, meaning when you pull out your total portfolio, including the profits, you don't have to pay any taxes on it, which is massive. So after you do that, then you can go ahead and invest in individual brokerage accounts like Webull or TD Ameritrade. 
You can buy the S&P, you can buy Tesla, you can buy Apple, you can buy Google, whichever companies you might like. But from there, how are you, how much are you going to invest in these companies, right? So you have to come up with a strategy. The best strategy for beginners is to dollar cost average $100 every week or something similar. Meaning you can use these apps or platforms like TD or Webull to go ahead and automate your investments. And every hundred dollars, every Monday, sorry, you can put in $100 into the S&P 500 automatically without even thinking, right? So set it and forget it for you. And also you should buy more significantly on big dips. This is going to be a little more of an advanced strategy, but just like when you guys go shopping and you see an article of clothing that you like, and it's on sale for 20%, you're going to go ahead and buy that article of clothing because that's something you want. So if you find a stock that's desirable fundamentally and nothing has changed and they're on a 20% dip, that's probably a good time to go ahead and buy that stock. So this is why currently, you know, the market's on a big dip could be a great time to go ahead and get started investing. Um, I want to refer to my budget sheet before going to the next slide. This was a budget sheet I made a long time ago, kind of based on a 60K yearly salary, which would be about 47K yearly after taxes. So you're getting about 4,000 a month after taxes. So if you can go ahead and invest 30% of your income, which I broke down the rent, food, recreation, extra bills, which would be a little bit over a thousand a month, you compound it yearly at 10%, and you put it over 35 years, let's say you're 25 years old right now, 35 year chart will put you at 60. You're going to have invested $487,000, but you'll have gotten $3.5 million in interest, meaning you'll have almost a $4 million portfolio. And where did I get this 10% rate from? That's about the average return on S and P 500. That's where I got the 10% from. It's definitely very attainable. And with a $4 million portfolio, if you're pulling 10% on your $4 million portfolio, that's $400,000 a year passively. Even if you're pulling 5% to be a lot more conservative, you're still pulling 200,000 a year passively. And you can see as the deposits, you know, the deposits are steady, right? You're putting in a thousand plus every month. The interest that you make, right, goes up significantly as your portfolio goes, grows. And that's why it's so important to start getting, start investing while you're young and to get started just ASAP, regardless of your age, right? Just get started. Everyone thinks, oh, I don't have enough to get started. I'm too scared to lose money. I'm too, you know, they may make a million different excuses, but they don't actually go ahead and figure out why is it important to get you know, invested? You know, inflation is outpacing wage growth, right? We're seeing insane inflation that wages are not keeping up with. We're seeing insane inflation in things that we need every day to live, right? Like food, housing, water. These are all things that are up almost, you know, 20% plus year over year, depending on what we're talking about. And if you're not getting a 20% increase in your salary, you know, you're basically losing out. And that's why you need to go ahead and get invested. So you're not just losing money to inflation. Um, finally, you know, with the take action, you're going to go ahead and start implementing your strategy. You know, keep in mind, this isn't financial advice and there is no one strategy that works for everyone. It's called personal finance for a reason because everyone has different wants, needs, goals, risk tolerance, etc. Another thing that I found is a good tip is to not compare yourself to others. Just get started. You know, don't see someone where they are and, you know, they might have been investing for 10 years. Obviously, your portfolio is going to look nothing like theirs if you've been investing for one month or one year even or even a couple of years, right? Don't compare yourself to others. Do your own research and never follow others blindly. You know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to come to you saying people you even trust saying, hey, you should invest in this. You should invest in this. And they might have great intentions, but it's important to do your own research so you're the one that's going to be liable for your own investments and you're going to create your own strategy that works for you. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that this helps you guys get started with investing as I gave you guys actionable steps that you guys can take. If you guys enjoy this type of comment, make sure you guys, if you guys enjoy this type of content, sorry, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.